So a bit of a negative video, the downsides to selling cars. So obviously like last month I did a video saying we'd sold 16 cars, I think it was. Brilliant. So I like to tell people that the good bits and the bad bits. So obviously when you sell secondhand cars, it's inevitable that you're going to get cars have issues once you've sold them. And it seems like this week I cannot get away from having issues with cars I've sold. Now, I know you might think, Tom, what are you saying? You're telling people the cars you've sold have got problems. But I've always promised that I'll be honest with the good and the bad times. So I'm going to list a couple of the, the scenarios and see what you guys think. So one of them was a low mileage Fiat 500. I sold it bang on three months ago now. But the person who bought the car contacted me about two weeks ago. So well within the warranty period. Uh, 17 plate Fiat 500, then 32,000 miles. I had a text message saying, Tom, um, the car is struggling to go into gear. Uh, so, look, instantly, I am useless, right, with dealing with comebacks. I hate it. Not because of the customer contact me. It just keeps me awake at night. I hate the thought that that customer is unhappy with what they have bought from me. And the easiest thing I want to do is just buy my way out of the situation. So, anyway... It comes through, it's gone to the garage, uh, they've diagnosed it as a clutch, uh, clutch slave cylinder, master cylinder, the pipe work, okay, that goes with it. So when the warranty company is involved, Momentum Warranties, who I've got um, a relationship with, because the word pipe work was mentioned, that's not covered under the warranty. So look, I get it, I, you know, in the small print it's not covered. So obviously if I want to buy a more expensive warranty per car, it might be covered because it's a, a wear and tear item. So what I did, I just paid the bills, 576 quid to get rid of the problem. Now, as I speak to you now, the warranty period is over. And I've said to the customer um, who's involved, listen, I am not going to see you out of pocket. I pride myself on customers being happy. So look, if I'm selling 10 cars and they're all going okay and I don't have any issues, paying for a problem is not the end of the world because... I would hope to think that that lady who's bought the car feels like she's had a good service. I've answered the phone instantly and I've dealt with the problem. She's not out of pocket. The car's fixed. It's back on the road. So that's that one. Another one. So I'll, I'll say two cars right now. If you ever see me advertising a Fiat 500 again or a Vauxhall Mocker, please shout at me. Another Vauxhall Mocker. Sold a Vauxhall Mocker 50,000 miles on a 16 plate. First problem was starter motor. Starter motor's gone in, it's a 4x4. Four four. Um, transfer box needs to come out to get it done. So that's done. Timing chain is loose now, so it's rattling. So it needs a new timing chain. So that marker's going to set me back about 1,600 quid. Can I go to the warranty company with that? I don't think so. I've, I've, I've sent in the invoice for the starter motor to be looked at, and the warranty company is looking at that now if they can help me. The timing chain, because it hasn't failed, it's not a failure. Wear and tear, I'll probably have to foot the bill for the £1,200 timing chain to be done. So, if you ever see me advertising, like I say, a Vauxhall Mocker or a Fiat 500, please, please shout at me. Because I will never, ever sell those cars ever again. Every time I've sold them, they just seem to cause me problems. And if that, that is a bit of consumer advice for you to stay clear of those cars, I would. So then, that was two existing cars that I've sold. But on Saturday morning, I got back from being away with Bianca and the kids... And I'd had a load of phone calls while I was away. So I sold three cars Saturday morning. And two of them have already given me a headache. The one of them, no, great, the little Vauxhall Corsa, touch wood, that's gone. But the one of them was a high mileage Audi A3. It had quite a lot of views on you, done 140,000 miles. Lovely guy who might watch this video, come here with his mum. They bought the car. They drove it all the way back to Aberystwyth. They even messaged me when I got home saying, Tom, the car drove beautifully. Thank you very much. It was lovely to sort of do the interaction and everything else. Great. The next day, though, it went wrong for him. And I was out on Sunday afternoon with my wife and kids having some food. My phone goes off. And instantly, honestly, the, the fear and the dread, you know, it's like a cold sweat comes over you. And I say to my wife, I'm going to have to take this. I'll message him, and, I, and I, I phoned the guy straight away, and what's happened, the clutch pedal's gone to the floor, slave cylinder again, blown all the fluid out of it, so it's been recovered to a garage. Um, now, when I've spoke to Momentum, I've just had a conversation with a guy from Momentum Warranties as friends, more than working for the company, and, and the take on this is, if you'd bought a £90,000 Mercedes-Benz, and it was 6 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, do you think Mercedes-Benz would answer the phone to you and promise you they were going to get it sorted instantly? And no, they'd probably say, well, look, well, 
no one would answer the phone to start because it's a Sunday afternoon. And they probably say, yeah, we'll have a look at the car in three weeks when we got a slot for you. And because that's what they told you, you would accept it. So technically I'm giving better service than a main dealer because I'm so eager to get these issues sorted. So anyway, the car's gone in this morning. I've spoke to the garage up in, up in Aberystwyth and they've been very helpful and they sound like good people. But there's always the concern from me that anything out of my sort of radius that I can control in-house, are they just going to be like, oh, he's a dodgy car dealer, Dominic Cardiff. Oof, we'll treble the bill now. So this brings me on then to... Oh, and the other one was a BMW 1 Series that you might have seen a video of as well. The electric windows stopped working. Now they're all working again. So I think the module on the door is a little bit ropey. But look, I want to, as a business, cater for everyone and sell cars which people can afford to buy and enjoy and use. But as a business, I leave myself wide open because I offer the same service. If I'm selling you a 30 grand Toyota Hilux or a two and a half thousand pound Audi A3, I will treat those customers exactly the same. But as a business, my liability of selling those things is leaving me wide open. And on a Sunday and you're getting phone calls, you're thinking, oh, I don't need this. You know, maybe I should just turn my phone off if I'm out for food, but I can't help it. I just want to help everyone. And this brings me on to with the warranty thing. And I'm gonna have a conversation with the guys tomorrow. They're gonna to come out and see me of, do I self warranty my cars? Every car I sell, maybe put a, a certain amount of money in a pot. So when the issues come, I can just instantly get them done. Because when they go through the process of they gotta log the claim, they want a full diagnostic report, um, then it's gotta go through the procedures. All this time, the customer is without use of their car. Now. If that was a main dealer, you'd accept it. But with me, people don't. They're like, well, what's happening then? When's the car going to be done? Not quite as blatant as that. And I'm not saying that the recent ones have been. But customers can come on quite heavy with me, which they wouldn't do with a main dealer because the main dealer is a multi-billion pound corporation who would just tell you that's the deal. So for me as a business, I just want to instantly sort problems now. So, right, how much is it going to cost to get you back on the road? 500 quid? Let's do it. Which maybe I'm too hasty to do that. I don't know. So I know I've turned on a little bit here about it, but I just wanted to explain to you, it's not all singing and dancing and rosy because there are downsides to it. And I'm not saying it's a bad, bad thing because look, I do have it good at times. And this brings me on to the last subject. Okay, so obviously I do the competitions now and I don't want to bore people with that all the time. But on one hand, you're selling 140,000 mile Audi A3s and getting phone calls on it, which is going to obliterate any sort of money was made in any way, and it's a headache. And on the other hand, you offer up these luxury items for a competition, which brings in money across a, a period of time. The person on the other end of that is ecstatic because, you know, and it's a, a great thing. And you think, well, why am I fighting fire or, or playing with fire, selling older, higher mileage cars when you could lean the business towards this. And the feedback I'm getting from the competition side of the business is what's next, when you're going next. And on that note, today I have purchased the next prize. I know it's not a car, but it is very, very desirable, which will be going live on Wednesday. So I don't know, as a business, you know, I run two businesses, but I think I've got to sort of navigate where I'm going and maybe sort of phase out certain types of vehicles in the sales business to protect myself from these things. I'm not saying you don't get issues with expensive cars, you, you do. But the sort of likelihood is a lot less than selling things which are higher in the miles. So yeah, I'm sure I've talked for way too long. I appreciate you listening. And if there's any feedback you've got for me in the comments, please leave it. And I shall speak to you all very soon. Thank you.